Honey? What? I think I'm gonna need the bucket. When was the last time you checked the rat traps? I think it's been a while. Hi, I'm Miss Debbie, and welcome to Haunted House. Today I'm going to show you how to take this and turn it into this. I'm going to start with a simple dollar store rat skeleton. All right, well, the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to do this project with a liquid latex. It's a general purpose latex. Uh, nothing special. I just picked it up on Amazon. How much did it cost? I don't remember. It was like five dollars or a thousand dollars. It wasn't a thousand dollars. It was under ten bucks if I like remember correctly. Ten dollars, something like that. Yeah. Uh, what I'm doing here is I have an old cutting board, uh, a marble cutting board specifically, and I'm laying down a layer of latex and I put a piece of tissue on it, just your regular tissue paper, single, single ply. Uh, this is actually going to be for part of the construction of the rat. Later on in the video, it will make a lot more sense. But I, you're doing this first because it needs to dry, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm doing this first so that it is dry when I'm ready to use it. It looks like you're putting it pretty thick, too. Yes, I am also putting it very thick. I need a very thick layer. All right, so we're going to start by taking some of the latex, and we're going to put it on right directly onto the rat. Mm -hmm. And I put it on first. So the tissue that I'm, the pieces of tissue that I'm going to be using, just stick right to it, just like that. And you'll note that I'm using very small pieces. Small pieces of tissue. Small pieces, yes, correct. Um, I'm also, if you notice that brush that I'm using is a very cheap, very disposable brush. Latex is almost impossible to get off of brushes. So I go to the dollar store, I buy a big giant pack of really cheap brushes. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'll usually go through a couple of brushes when I'm doing a rat. Oh, okay. Because you can't clean them out. You really can't clean them out. It, it's not worth it. Okay. Gotcha. And that's, yeah, so you just get the cheap ones. Those come like in a pack of 12 or something like that anyway. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. For a buck. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not a big deal. But and so, so what's the point of the tissue? The tissue gives it a more skin-like torn quality to it. Oh, okay. So the latex just itself would be just like painting. Yeah, kind of. The latex itself wouldn't have as much uh, texture or more of a desiccated skin look to it, and that's where the tissue comes in. Hmm, I see. Yeah. And it just on the head, I just keep doing little bits and pieces. I go over the eye sockets. You know, I'll, I'll stick the brush in the sockets. I, I see sometimes you use the back of the brush to like poke stuff down. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because it doesn't have a lot of latex on it and it won't stick back to it. Latex, one fun thing about it is it sticks to itself really, really well. Oh, sure, yeah. Well, even well, when it's dry. Even when, it, yeah. We'll show a very good example a little bit later. Right here, what I'm doing is I'm going to cover up the seam between the top of the skull and the body of the rat. Um, right. Just and that's a, one of the reasons you do this is because you can cover up all these little mistakes in the skeleton, right? Exactly. Yeah. Or were the skeletons put together? You know, it's 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 a dollar store skeleton. It cost me a buck, so. So it's got some pretty bad gaps. It does. I mean, I personally think it's you know for a buck, it's pretty good to begin with. Oh yeah, they are. But yeah. No. Oh, in this one, you can actually see the helping hands that I am using to hold my skeleton rat. This I use those to give me the opportunity to move it around as I need. Sure, it keeps it stable and right. you're not knocking it over and stuff. Now here on the ribs, you'll notice that I'm using a very large piece of tissue um, because the ribs are a very large area and I need it to cover like it, the skin has shrunk over the skeleton. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, and I kind of did something similar along the back that we didn't see, I, but I used long strips and I just laid it over. Oh, down the spine? Yeah, down the spine. And I'm making sure that I get all of the tissue that the latex. Ah, and here is what I was doing with this piece of latex. What I'm doing here is, of course, I'm cutting off. That's the one you made earlier. It is the one I made at the beginning of the video. What I'm doing is I'm making um, stomach skin. And I'm going to put it over the stomach area so it looks like the skin was still intact, but it's very desiccated. Now, this, again, is where 
Latex sticks to latex very, very well. So I'm being very careful not ah, there not to get it stuck to any other parts of latex except where I want it. Um, it, it sticks a little bit, but I can maneuver it. And I, I kind of wrinkle in there, but I did manage to get it out. It looks a lot like chicken skin, doesn't it? It does look a lot like chicken skin. <laughs> Cooked chicken skin. And you're stretching it there. Yep, I'm, I'm stretching around, and, and it's just, I didn't ha I put a little bit of latex, you know, around, wet latex around it, um, not absolutely necessary, is helpful. And I'm kind of pushing it all down, and I'm going to do it again between the neck and the collarbone, because these are areas that if, you know, your skin desiccated around you, you would still have skin. Right, so you're stretching it over. I'm stretching it over, yeah. To make it look like the skin is still there, yeah. Correct. But more like hollow now. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of squish down. And my last one is I'm going to do the underside of the jawbone. And all these pieces were cut from that little chunk that you made earlier. They were. Yeah. You know, and you'll notice when I opened the jaw there that you kind of get some stringies from the latex. Oh, from the top jaw to the bottom right. jaw. Right. And that's a good thing. So I added, what I did is I wanted a little bit more. So I, I painted some latex on there and I let it dry and now I'm stretching it open. So it looks like the skin for the jaw is kind of still there and attaching it a little right. bit. Right, yeah. That looks really good. I like the way that looks. Yeah, I'm holding it so... Oh, it's a bit. oh here comes the really fun part. This is where we get to um, actually give it some color. Now, those are acrylic paints? Those are. These are just acrylic craft paints, nothing special. Just go to the craft store. Uh, I chose a black, a nutmeg brown, and kind of a moss green. This is a base color, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint the whole rat this color. And those are mixed together? They, the they, are, they are mixed together. You can't, it's difficult to see the subtleties in the, in the video, um, but it, it kind of has a, a really dirty little bit of a green color tinge to it. Mm -hmm. and, it um, seems to stick well to the latex. It does stick well to the latex, which is really nice. Um, y you'll notice like the skin on the stomach is still kind of a little bit transparent I just paint over it a couple of times and after it's dry this is this is, is already dried right yep this is dried here what I'm doing is I'm gonna scrape away a little bit of the paint just to give it more depth um, I'm just using a craft stick uh, you can use your fingernails if you want to uh, right at that moment I don't really have any fingernails and I'm just giving it Depth it is very flat when I first painted it. So it looks like the ribs and yeah, the, the rib, bones are exposed you, you, a yeah, little bit. Yeah. yeah, places are rubbed, and you know, around the eye sockets, on the ears, on the fingers. You know, it's just not it's not a flat surface anymore. It gives it a more three D effect. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing here is I'm giving it a little bit of um, a fleshy kind of blood sort of color to it. This just is adding more depth to it. Oh, this is the fun part. We're going to give it a little bit of fur. This is just a piece of fur that we take, took off another project. It's fake fur. It's a very small chunk, too. You don't really need a lot. No, you don't. And here, I'm going to attach it with the latex. So um, I'm painting the latex on again. It will, fortunately, dry clear. So you'll, you won't see the latex again. I snipped off some of the hair, and I'm just sticking it on there. And you're doing it really loosely, it looks like. A little bit, and I'm taking... Again, the other end of the paintbrush, and I'm kind of gooshing it into the latex. Um, I'm not aiming for any sort of perfection. This is desiccated sewer rat. So, you know, he has bits of hair going every which way, and I'm going to put a whole bunch of it all the way down his spine. Just, just like that. There it is, all the way down his spine. You know, I'll probably fill in a couple of places just to... You know, give it a little bit more bulk here and there. And I'm pushing it into the latex so it sticks on there. And probably like 90% of that stayed on there, right? Most of it did. Yeah, that's pretty good. I get up and... Give him know, a mohawk. Get, you could give him... I didn't really give him a mohawk. I gave him kind of bushy hair there. But you could. You could give your rat a mohawk by all means. And I'm going to put some of this fur on his nose and face. But what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm not going to leave it long. I cut like little flakies off of the short stuff. And I'm kind of moving it around because, you know, rats don't really have long fur on their face. Right. It's very, it's a very short fur. It's very almost like flocking. It is, yeah. 
So, and I, I, did, I did this technique in a, in, a, in a couple of different areas. I did it on his face, and I did some on his ribs. And this is the same, uh, same fur? Same fur, yeah. It's just where I cut the long pieces off, there were some little short pieces left, so I cut, cut that off too and stuck it on there. And like I said, I, I, I'll stick it to his ribs and, you know, little bits and pieces to his legs. And you can kind of see what it turned out to be. And that's, and that's pretty much it. That is. It's a final project. You'll see some, some of the fur sticking out on his legs. Mm -hmm. um, and then on his chest, I did the really short fur again. And that's it. You got a nice scary wrap from a dollar store skeleton. Excellent. Yeah. Well, well that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you. I think that was okay.